Terry's fist slammed against the bar as the hollow screen showed the glowing cosmic titan enveloping yet another star system, the titanic alien radiating power as planet after planet crumbled under its relentless assault. Terry had seen enough. This galaxy-consuming monster needed to be stopped here and now by any means necessary before all of humanity was wiped from existence. He glanced up at the broadcast, his eyes narrowing as he studied the shimmering titan, a being of pure destructive energy that had already devoured over a dozen systems. For months, the unstoppable entity had terrorized the galaxy, leaving only silent darkness in its wake. No fleet, no weapon, no defense had proven effective against its immense power. Terry took a long swig of his drink, the potent liquid burning his throat. Around him, the dimly lit bar buzzed with a mixture of apprehension and desperation. Tsenkethi warriors huddled in small groups, their hushed conversations punctuated by the occasional burst of nervous laughter. A particularly loud guffaw caught Terry's attention. He turned to see a group of battle-scarred Tsenkethi gathered around a table, their mocking laughter directed at the hollow screen. The Galactic Council must be truly desperate, one of them sneered, to place a bounty on an undefeatable foe. Only a fool would even consider accepting such a suicidal mission, another chimed in, his voice dripping with disdain. Terry's interest was piqued. He stood up and approached the group, his worn boots echoing on the metal floor. The Tsenkethi fell silent as he neared, their eyes assessing the rugged human mercenary. Tell me more about this bounty, Terry demanded, his voice low and steady. The leader of the group, a grizzled warrior named Knox, let out a derisive snort. You must be joking, human. The cosmic titan is not a foe to be trifled with. Entire fleets have been decimated by its power. Terry leaned forward, his gaze intense. I'm not asking for your opinion on my chances. I want the details. Where was the titan last seen? What are the specifics of the bounty? Knox hesitated for a moment, then shrugged. The reward is substantial, I'll grant you that. As for the Titan's location, reports indicate it was last spotted in the Veltrak system, on the edge of Tsenkethi space. Terry nodded, his mind already racing with possibilities. He turned to leave, but Knox's voice stopped him. You're walking into certain death, human. No one has ever survived an encounter with the Titan. Terry glanced back a grim smile playing on his lips. We'll see about that, he replied before striding out of the bar and into the neon-lit streets of Tsenketh Prime. He had a cosmic titan to catch and a galaxy to save, and if there was one thing Terry knew, it was that when humanity set its mind to something, nothing in the universe could stand in its way, not even an ancient, planet-killing alien menace. Terry's mind raced as he left the bar, Knox's words echoing in his head. The Veltrak system, that was his next destination. But he couldn't take on the Titan alone. He needed a ship and a crew crazy enough to join him on this suicide mission. Terry tapped into his network of mercenary contacts, calling in favors and promising untold riches to anyone willing to join his cause. Within a week, he had assembled a motley crew of the galaxy's most fearless and foolhardy warriors. There was Zara, the Tsenkethi sharpshooter with a cybernetic eye, Grix, the Hoda'al demolitions expert, and Ryloth, the Zanik pilot who could fly anything with an engine. With his crew assembled, Terry poured his life savings into acquiring a ship worthy of their mission. He settled on a heavily modified Terran stealth frigate, equipped with the latest in cloaking technology and enough firepower to take on a small fleet. The ship, which he christened the Shadow's Edge, would be their home and their weapon in the battles to come. As the Shadow's Edge entered the Zephyrus system, Terry felt a sense of unease wash over him. The system was remote and largely uninhabited, a perfect hiding spot for a cosmic predator. The crew navigated through treacherous asteroid fields and swirling gas clouds, their sensors scanning for any sign of the Titan's energy signature. Suddenly Ryloth's console lit up, I'm picking up something, the Zanik said, his voice tense. It's faint, but it matches the Titan's profile. Terry leaned forward in his chair, his eyes locked on the viewscreen. Follow that trail, he ordered. Let's see where it leads us. 
The shadow's edge plunged into a massive, pulsating nebula, its eerie light casting a sickly glow over the ship's interior. As they approached the heart of the nebula, the ship suddenly shuddered violently, thrown off course by a powerful shockwave. Terry gripped the armrests of his chair as alarms blared throughout the ship. What the hell was that, he demanded. Before anyone could respond, the view screen flared to life, revealing a sight that sent chills down Terry's spine. The Titan emerged from the swirling gases, its form shifting and morphing like a living constellation. It was even more terrifying in person than it had been on the hollow screen. Open fire, Terry shouted, his voice nearly drowned out by the roar of the Shadow's Edge's weapons. Beams of concentrated energy lanced out towards the Titan, only to be absorbed harmlessly by its shimmering energy field. The entity retaliated with a barrage of plasma bursts that slammed into the shadow's edge, tearing through its shields like they were made of paper. The ship shuddered and groaned under the onslaught, its hull buckling under the strain. Terry realized they were outmatched. The Titan was too powerful, too advanced for their weapons to even scratch it. He had to get his crew out of here before they were all killed. Grix, launch the tracking probes, Terry ordered. Ryloth, get us out of here now. As the Shadow's Edge pulled away from the Titan, Grix fired a volley of small dart-like probes towards the entity. The probes embedded themselves in the Titan's surface, their faint tracking signals the only sign they had hit their mark. Terry watched the Titan recede into the distance as Ryloth pushed the Shadow's Edge's engines to their limit. They had escaped with their lives, but just barely. The Titan was unlike anything Terry had ever faced before. Taking it down, would require more than just firepower and bravery, it would take a miracle. The Shadow's Edge limped into the spaceport at Zenketh Prime, its hull scorched and dented from the Titan's assault. Terry's hands still shook from the adrenaline as he guided the ship into the docking bay. They had barely escaped with their lives, but they were alive and that was enough for now. As the crew set about making repairs, Terry retreated to his quarters, poring over the data from the tracking probes, he stared at the energy readouts, his brow furrowed in concentration. There was something there, a pattern in the fluctuations that he couldn't quite put his finger on. Days turned into weeks as Terry worked, barely sleeping or eating. His crew started to worry, but he waved off their concerns. He was close to something. He could feel it. And then, like a bolt of lightning, it hit him. The Titan's energy field wasn't constant. It ebbed and flowed in a specific pattern. If they could disrupt that pattern, even for a moment, they might be able to weaken the Titan's defences. Terry burst into Knox's quarters, his eyes wild with excitement. I've got it, he said, thrusting a data pad into the Tsenkethi's hands. Look at this. Knox studied the readouts, his expression sceptical. You're telling me you think you've found a way to defeat the Titan? Terry nodded. It's a long shot, but it's the best chance we've got. Knox was silent for a long moment, then sighed. I know someone who might be able to help, a scientist named Dr. Zahn. He's been studying the Titan for years. The two men found Dr. Zahn in his lab, surrounded by a maze of equipment and glowing screens. The Tsenkethi scientist was ancient, his skin wrinkled and his eyes clouded with cataracts, but his mind was as sharp as ever. You're not the first to come to me with a plan to defeat the Titan, Dr. Zarn said, his voice raspy. But you are the first to have data like this. Together, the three of them worked to design a weapon that could emit a focused beam of energy at the exact frequency needed to disrupt the Titan's field. But there was a catch. The weapon required a rare and volatile power source that could only be found in the heart of a dying star. Terry and Knox gathered their crew and set out to retrieve the power source. They fought against rival mercenary groups and navigated through the treacherous gravitational forces of the collapsing star, pushing their ship to its limits. In the end, they succeeded in securing the power source, but at a great cost. Zara, the Tsenkethi sharpshooter, and Ryloth, the Zanik pilot, gave their lives to ensure the mission's success. Terry held the power source in his hands, feeling its warmth even through the protective casing. With this, they finally had a chance to take down the Titan. But the cost had been high, and Terry knew that the hardest part was yet to come. 
Terry gently cradled the power source in his hands, as Dr. Zahn and Knox hunched over the anti-Titan weapon, carefully integrating the volatile device. Sparks flew as they soldered connections and calibrated the emitters, tension thick in the air. They had one shot, one chance to save the galaxy. Increase the oscillation frequency by 0.7%, Dr. Zahn rasped, his gnarled fingers flying over the control panel. Knox grunted in acknowledgement, making the adjustment. The weapon hummed with barely restrained power. They tested the device on a small scale, firing it at a simulated energy field. The beam sliced through the barrier like a hot knife, destabilizing the field in seconds. Terry nodded grimly. It was now or never. He opened a comm channel to the Galactic Council. This is Terry, requesting immediate assistance. The Titan is heading for the Theron system. Millions of lives are at stake. The response was swift. Affirmative, Terry. A fleet of our most powerful warships is en route to engage the Titan, sending coordinates now. Godspeed. Da Terry and Knox exchanged a look of determination as they boarded their stealth ship. The anti-Titan weapon securely mounted in the hold. They blasted off, racing towards the coordinates, the fate of the galaxy resting on their shoulders. As they approached the Theron system, the scale of the battle became apparent. The Council's fleet swarmed around the Titan like angry hornets, their weapons firing in a dazzling display of light and fury. The Titan lashed out with tendrils of pure energy, destroying ships left and right. Terry gripped the controls, his knuckles white. Hold on, he growled, plunging the stealth ship into the heart of the chaos. They dodged and weaved through the maelstrom of energy blasts and debris, the ship's alarms blaring in warning. The Titan loomed before them, a seething mass of shifting energy. Terry locked onto the entity's core, a pulsating sphere of blinding light. Fire! he roared. Nox slammed his fist down on the weapon's trigger. A brilliant lance of energy erupted from the ship, piercing the Titan's heart. For a moment, time seemed to stand still. Then the Titan convulsed, its form unraveling like a tapestry caught in a hurricane, its energy field destabilized, flickering and fading. A deafening roar filled the void as the entity began to collapse in on itself. But the Titan was not yet defeated. In a final, desperate act, it unleashed a massive burst of energy, engulfing Terry and Knox's ship. Alarms screamed as the ship's systems overloaded, sparks flying from shattered consoles. Terry fought to regain control, but it was too late. The blast sent them tumbling, spiraling out of control towards the surface of a nearby planet. Terry gritted his teeth as the ground rushed up to meet them, bracing for impact. The ship slammed into the planet's surface with a sickening crunch of metal, carving a burning trail of destruction through the barren landscape. Terry's head slammed against the console, pain exploding behind his eyes as darkness closed in. Terry groaned as he regained consciousness, pain flaring through every inch of his battered body. He forced his eyes open, blinking away the blood that trickled from a gash on his forehead. The acrid smell of smoke and burnt metal filled his nostrils, and he coughed, his lungs burning. Beside him, Nock stirred, his breaths coming in ragged gasps. We're alive, the Tsenkethi rasped, his voice weak but filled with disbelief. Terry nodded, wincing as he unbuckled his harness and pushed himself out of the crumpled remains of his seat. He staggered to his feet, surveying the wreckage of their once proud stealth ship. The hull had been torn open like a tin can, exposing the twisted innards of the vessel. We have to get out of here, Terry said, extending a hand to Knox. The Senkethi grasped it and together they limped out of the ruined ship, emerging into the harsh light of an alien sun. Above them, the sky was a kaleidoscope of colors, a dazzling display of light and energy. Terry squinted, his eyes widening as he realized what he was witnessing. The Titan, the scourge of the galaxy, was unraveling before their very eyes, its form dissolving into a brilliant cascade of sparks and flares. We did it, Terry breathed, a grin spreading across his face despite the pain. We actually did it. Knox nodded, his expression a mix of relief and exhaustion. The galaxy is safe thanks to you. 
As the adrenaline began to fade, the weight of their situation settled upon them. They were stranded on an unknown world, their ship destroyed, their means of communication gone. Terry looked out at the barren landscape that stretched before them, a seemingly endless expanse of rocky terrain and jagged cliffs. We need to find shelter, he said, his voice grim, and water, we won't last long out here without it. Knox grunted his agreement, and together they set off, their steps slow and laboured as they navigated the treacherous terrain. The sun beat down upon them, its heat oppressive and unrelenting. Sweat poured down their faces, stinging their eyes and mixing with the blood from their wounds. Hours turned into days as they trudged onwards, their throats parched and their stomachs empty. They scavenged what they could from the sparse vegetation they encountered, chewing on tough, fibrous roots and sipping moisture from dew-covered leaves. At night, they huddled together for warmth, their once adversarial relationship slowly giving way to a begrudging sense of camaraderie. They shared stories of their pasts, their hopes and dreams, their fears and regrets. I never thought I'd die side by side with a human, Knox said one night, his voice a hoarse whisper in the darkness. Terry chuckled, the sound dry and raspy. I never thought I'd die at all, he replied. Days turned into weeks, and still they survived, their wits and their will to live keeping them going. They fashioned crude tools from the scraps of metal they scavenged from their ruined ship, using them to hunt the small, scurrying creatures that roamed the rocky plains. But just as they began to adapt to their new reality, they encountered something that shattered their fragile sense of security. It came in the night. A strange, hostile life form, unlike anything they had ever seen. It was a writhing mass of tentacles and teeth, its skin a mottled grey, and its eyes a soulless black. Terry and Knox fought with all the strength they had left, their makeshift weapons clashing against the creature's razor-sharp claws. But it was too strong, too fast, and Knox was knocked to the ground, his chest torn open by a vicious swipe. Terry dragged him to safety, his heart pounding as he assessed the damage. Knox's wounds were severe, his breaths coming in short, ragged gasps. Terry knew he had to act fast, but his options were limited. He had no medical supplies, no way to stem the bleeding or prevent infection. In that moment, he was faced with a terrible choice. He could attempt a risky, untested procedure, using the crude tools at his disposal to try and save Knox's life, or he could let his friend die, sparing him the agony of a slow, painful death. Knox met Terry's gaze, his eyes clouded with pain but still sharp with understanding. Don't, he rasped, his voice barely audible. Don't try to save me. It's too late. Terry shook his head, tears welling in his eyes. I can't just let you die, he said, his voice cracking. Knox reached out, his hand trembling as he grasped Terry's arm. You have to, he said, his voice growing weaker with each word. You have to survive, Terry. The galaxy needs to know what we did here. What you did. Terry bowed his head his shoulders shaking with silent sobs. He knew Knox was right. He had to live, had to find a way off this planet and back to civilization. He had to make sure their sacrifice meant something. With a heavy heart, he did what needed to be done. He held Knox's hand as the life faded from his eyes, whispering words of comfort and gratitude, and when it was over, he buried his friend beneath a pile of stones, marking the grave with a simple cross fashioned from two pieces of metal. Terry stood atop a cliff, gazing out at the alien landscape that stretched before him. The sun was setting, painting the sky in shades of orange and red. In the distance, he could see the wreckage of their ship, a twisted monument to their struggle. He knew the road ahead would be hard. He was alone now, stranded on a world that seemed determined to kill him at every turn. But he also knew he had no choice but to keep going, to honor Knox's memory by surviving and thriving in the face of adversity. Terry took a deep breath, squaring his shoulders as he turned away from the setting sun. He had a long journey ahead of him, one that would test him in ways he had never been tested before. But he was ready for whatever challenges the cosmos had in store. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, 
I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.